What's up everyone, Brian Downward here, and this is Laptop Empires, the show that teaches you how to build and grow a business from anywhere in the world. This is episode number 11. Today we have John Schumacher on, and I am super pumped because webinars are the number one way you can sell more of your products and services online, and John is a webinar master. So he's going to be breaking down his best strategies, what you should be doing, and what you should avoid. So I'm really excited to share his advice with you. I will see you behind the screen. Welcome everyone, this is Laptop Empires, episode number 11. I've got my good friend John Schumacher here. John, thank you so much for being here. Woohoo! I'm ready, Brian. Let's do this. This will be yeah. a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, I'm John, ready. Well, listen, I, before we dive in, though, I just want to say John is all-around great guy, super nice, humble. He wouldn't admit it, but he is a master at webinars, and that's why I'm <laughs> super excited to have him here today because you know, a lot of people we see online, a lot of the people we follow do webinars and are very successful at it, but there's so many moving pieces, and I feel a lot of us get overwhelmed, including myself. So I know you guys are going to be super pumped to hear what John has to say. So John, why don't you just tell us first a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got to where you are today? Yeah. So um, my name is John Schumacher. I'm over at johnschumacher.com and the webinarmasteryacademy.com. Um, a little bit about me. I run a, an online program called the Webinar Mastery Academy that focuses on helping you know, subject matter experts uh, sell courses and coaching packages one to many using webinars. Um, I've been doing webinars since 2013. I started out doing one a week for an entire year um, and just kind of continued to pivot and, and sort of eventually I thought, hey, I should teach this sort of thing to people. And I love marketing, love helping people share their message and and just kind of kept going with this whole webinar live video thing these last few years and was able to quit my job, go full time um, working from home, building my own brand and my own, that. my own business and it's just a continual journey. <laughs> That's awesome. So what was yeah. there, was there like a moment that you kind of had that light bulb moment? Like, wow, webinars, this is the thing or was it kind of just a gradual you know, process to get there? It was a little gradual for me. Like I was in the healthcare industry before business, um, didn't have a background in business or computers or technology. I had to kind of self-teach myself um, a lot of things. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just something I, I knew I wanted to leave my job. I was sort of sick of it at the time. Uh, I was looking for a way for that sort of the outlet to get get to something that I both like teaching, but also could pay pay enough money and income to to uh, get me out of my job. And and that was sort of it. Was was I, I really saw that you know live video and webinars and the engagement factors that you could create with those were going to be big. It was still kind of new back in 2013, you know, as far as live video and live. I had one of the first live video shows in like the health space yeah, and that's awesome. all, all kinds of where, stuff. Where were so, you doing that? What were you streaming off of? Google Hangouts for that? Yeah, Google Hangouts on Air. And that was when it was kind of new at that time. I think it launched in 2012, if I remember right. Um, and it was like shortly after that that I, I actually hired a coach. She taught me how to do it. And then I just started doing them all the time, like um, entrepreneur awesome, inter, 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 interview, interviewing entrepreneurs in the healthcare space, doing little roundtables, webinars. I had a podcast and a live video show okay. in, that, in that space, but just eventually realized it wasn't really where I wanted to go with things. I enjoyed helping people with their marketing and sort of the, the messaging. And and so right. that's what, what I decided to go and, and teach, yeah. Awesome, yeah, well, for me yeah. too, marketing, the creative piece of marketing is I think what's most fun and what attracted me to it, especially. Yeah. So if someone was skeptical, you know, someone was new to webinars, or they've heard about it, they know they should maybe be doing it, what would you say to that person who's skeptical why they should care and why it's important for their business? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, as far as if you're a coach or a course creator or a consultant and you want to reach one-to-many, like let's say instead of speaking from stage or doing one-on-one -on -one sort of meetings with people, I mean, what better way to reach people than being able to be at home with your family, turn on your computer, fire up your software and, and reach people all over the world who have a potential to be a great client for you. So that's really why it works so well is, is one, it gives you leverage. It gives you the ability to build your email list. It gives you the ability to grow, uh, sell your products one to many and really build rapport with people at a whole like visceral level, right? Because when you can see people, you can hear them, you can be live with them. It's really the next best thing than me and you right now, like sitting here having coffee, basically. Yeah. And, and it really is a great rapport builder when you use it well. Um, when it's when you give value and it's not just a glorified pitch fest. Um, that's one way to burn your burn your people away from you a little bit. But um, but it's a great tool for a number of reasons. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And then for my business, um, I've been experimenting with it in different ways. And it's funny, I would say I did my first webinar back in probably 2012, 2013, right around the time you did, but yeah. I didn't, 
maybe didn't see the value right away or didn't fully understand how to leverage it. Um, but over the past year, year and a half now, as I've started to step more into the digital space, I've seen conversion rates on webinars can reach like 20, 30 percent sometimes. And it's funny when they talk about, you know, they compare email marketing to social media marketing. They're always like, oh, email marketing has, you know, 4 percent conversion rate and social media is only one. And they don't even mention webinars over here, but like you can convert sometimes 20, 30 percent of the people who you have on a webinar into a playing customer because of that one on one connection. Yeah, I mean, it depends on a few factors, right? Um, right. Price point, you know, how warm that audience is to you. For sure. Um, those type of things. But yeah, I mean, I've had as high as 30, 34, I think, percent. Was, wow. But that was a $200, $200 product. That was actually almost two years ago now. How, how um, many people on that webinar? I'm just curious. It, it, it was a smaller webinar. It was like 50 people live. So it wasn't it wasn't a big data pool or anything. But um, it still did very well um, yeah, for, for that for that. And so for all of you who are newer out there, that's kind of how I got started. You can definitely do that with a lower tier product in particular um, to get started. So uh, but now, you know, I mean, uh, most people here's the thing. Most of it happens after the webinar as well. Right. Like so yeah, people look at a sure. webinar as just a singular event and they don't have any kind of back end follow up to it. I actually get more sales in the follow up than I do live now, particularly because I'm selling a thousand dollar program. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, the conversion rates are, are generally higher with a webinar than anything else because you get to w build that rapport with right. people a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what maybe challenges did you come to? Because I know getting to a 34% conversion rate, that's an incredible feat. But of course, you didn't start there. And a lot of people, including myself, you know, you get frustrated when you do a couple of webinars, you don't make any sales. What challenges did you face, you know, throughout this process? I'm sure there still are some, but what big roadblocks that kind of kept you from maybe taking this to the next level or continuing to do it? Uh, in the beginning, what was blocking me? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I guess any challenges or roadblocks you faced through this process of using webinars that we're going to inevitably face as newbies. Yeah, I mean, well, the first barrier is the technology, right? So, I mean, yeah. that's always the number one hang up for people like myself. I, I'd never done it before. So, um, I hired a coach to help me at least a one off session to kind of get okay. me squared away. And then it's just practice, right? Practice with your cat, your dog, a couple friends, you know, whatever it takes for you to sort of get <laughs> comfortable because fear is a big thing for new people, right? Yeah. I mean, speaking on camera is scary, right? Well, Being it, on video funny, like, is scary. I'm more fearful of not having enough people to listen to me. Like, I'm less fearful of <laughs> having the conversation and doing the webinar than I am like, oh, shit, I only have like four or five people that are actually here in the room and I'm supposed to start right now. Oh, let's just do it. So yeah. um, I definitely, what would you say to someone who's like at that point, like most people probably are to push past that and feel comfortable. Like eh, if it's only four people, just do it. You know, that's kind of what I tell myself. You just have to do that and kind of do the crappy stuff to get to the next level. But what would your advice be for someone like that? Yeah, I mean, that's the second most common is how do I get people there, right? Besides right. the tech. So um, yeah, I mean, some of that is starting when you're when you just don't have an audience i mean i remember hosting webinars with eight people and stuff like that and you're like okay you know but um i think you, you should practice showing up just like it would be if it was a lot of people right and so you polish your skills a little bit so when you when you are going to grow you're ready um the other piece is is if you're continually only having four or five people you might want to look at your strategy for getting people right. there you know yeah. it's like okay like yes a couple of those are okay go ahead practice some you know work on your skills so that when you get bigger you know you 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 feel more comfortable but but you you might want to think about you know how you're actually attracting people and i think one of the pieces people usually you know if they don't have a list they want to just go use facebook ads that can work for some audiences and some markets it's not as easy as people make it sound um, but partnerships are another big one that right. people, you know, don't think about. They don't spend enough time really building relationships in their industry. They're sort of just producing content and kind of behind the scenes. But really, you're all, you're one partner away from like a significant level up in your business. Yeah. Um, when, I remember when I started, I, I did a JV webinar. I had like 130 people on my list. Um, that person had like 10,000, wow. but they still, but they were still able to promote me because they liked me and I had a relationship and I had a, right. a webinar that they liked. And, you know, we, we added in another 500 people pretty quickly, you know, to that webinar, um, just from doing one partner webinar. And, you know, when you get, take your list from a hundred to, to 600 and something, right. you know, it's not big numbers, but you, back then you're like, woohoo, you yeah, know, but it's no, still like, huge. but it, but it's growth. It's significant growth, um, for right. your business at that time. So, so spend some time 
building relationships. Because like you say, if you can do even a non-pitch webinar or an offer webinar or an interview style webinar with another person's audience and they're willing to like share it with their audience, um, that, that will that will help your business grow. Yeah, and, and absolutely. So those are some things I think people forget about doing is trying to do it all on your own, blogging your brains out, making videos, yeah. no I'm one's guilty. watching them. No one's watching them, you know, that kind of thing. And, and it's like you can't connect to other people. You know, that, that'll help you grow. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm definitely guilty of hiding in, you know, my behind <laughs> my desk and just writing blog posts until I'm blue in the face. And it's funny, what I want my audience to hear and people to hear also is you don't necessarily, and I, I came to this realization this year, but you don't need to have some huge JV partner who's like this influencer in your industry. Um, it's going to be really difficult to get there. I mean... If you're a consultant or a coach, you can go to other local businesses who serve a business community um, and partner with that person to do a webinar. And they don't have to have a huge list. It can be 500 people. But if it's just 500 people, that's your ideal audience. You can still close that sale. Yeah. Now, yeah. I didn't do a webinar uh, for this partner, but I work with patio furniture stores and a manufacturer who's got hundreds of retailers. I partnered up with them to send out a video to their list. I thought a video would just be better than a webinar just because people wouldn't maybe it'd be easier to get them to the video than to capture them all in the webinar. But again, it yep. was just a small partner, a very small list. I'm, they're not an influencer or anything, but I got new customers because of that partnership and webinar style training that I did. Yeah. No, it's key, right? And and like you said, don't go after the biggest name in the industry because they're usually already doing all that stuff with others. You know, find a few people that are a couple of notches, quote unquote, ahead of where you are that have an audience or that have a good fit. Could be a blogger, could be an organization, could be a, a software company, could be, you know, uh, somebody. But look to build a relationship. Don't just lead with the ask. Right. Like people. Perfect. I mean, I'm sure you get this, too. I get this, you know, each week, you know, people are like, hey, you know, like, I, would you promote my course or you know, I've never met you, guy. Like, I don't know you. Like, yeah. Uh, so it's 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 crazy. But yeah. So so spend some time building a, a relationship. You know, I'm big on that. And it's it's long game, but I think this is a long game, right? There's no hack. There's no secret ninja sauce. You know, when it comes to building your audience, I mean, there's certain things that work better than others, but right. it's still work. You know, yeah, it's still work. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. Yeah. And I think um, would you would you say webinars are I'm not sorry, not webinars, but partnerships are your number one way to get people to your webinars? I do a lot of that. Um, like I have one tomorrow, um, but it, you know it's one of the ways to do it. I mean, I have a, a list now of people that I can mail to get to my webinar now, which is really makes it easy for me. Yeah. I, I, I didn't start that way, right? Uh, but you know, I could reach out and email a list and bring you know hundreds of people to sign up for my webinar. That's awesome. Uh, so, but. You know, and people are each day sort of coming onto my list. You know, I'm not, you know, and, and things like that now. Um, so you're kind of getting in new people. But yeah, to start with, partners were big. You know, now that I have some more, you know, a little more income to spend, I'm using, I use paid a little bit more uh, traffic to speed things up a little bit. Um, but still, it's, you know, mainly just my list and, and doing partnerships. Um, I've done two online summits, and that's mostly partner yeah. traffic as well. So. Um, and that adds, you know, several thousand emails at a time, you know, to your database. So, but that's all partner traffic. So I would say yes. I mean, partners have been my number one way to grow to this point. That's awesome. How many um, yeah. leads did you generate from that summit? I was actually a part of that, and that's how you and I are thinking yeah. connected. Yeah, it was forty six hundred and sixty, I think. Okay. Leads. That's, but yeah. I mean, again, super targeted people who are interested in webinars yeah. and yeah. 5,000 yeah. new leads from partners. I mean, that speaks to the power of it. And all it costs you is your time. Yeah, it took it took time and work. But yeah, it wasn't, um, and you know, I give a revenue split for certain sales and things. But other yeah. than that, it's 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 no front end cost other than than just, you know, spending the time and, and the work, you know, to do it. Right. So and you yeah. got to be uh, willing to do things other people don't want to do to get the things that everyone wants. I think so. If you want to stand out, right? And I yeah. think you need to to give a little more of yourself. Um, sure. You know, and that's just the way it is. If you don't want to do that, if your if your goal is to sit on the beach smoking doobies, then then that <laughs> you know that that's fine. You can build businesses around that too, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know. Nowadays, you can. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So anyway, man, some of these people yeah. out here in California making millions of dollars doing that nonsense. Um, but cool. You listen, we got some incredible strategies for attracting people to a webinar. Now you talked about you make a lot of your sales in the follow-up, what would you say your best advice would be 
during the webinar to maximize sales and then of course after the fact to continue to get those trickle on sales for people who didn't convert on the live call yeah well, i think a lot of it is how you structure your webinar um so I, I call them the big three, right? It's your it's your web it's your presentation, your offer, and your follow up, right? Those are your big, okay. big core like 80, 20 sort of like pieces, and then of course you can optimize everything else um, to improve your numbers. But um, so your you know your offer needs to be solid, you know it needs to have a good big idea statement. It has to, you have to have you know proof of that statement. If you have testimonials or third party validation or statistics to back it up, you know that's always great. Right. Um, you know. Um, you know, sharing the logistics, but tying them to benefits, you know, having a power guarantee, having all the things that make an offer an offer still matters on a webinar. In fact, that's probably the most important thing is like that. It's, it's, you know, no one cares that you really are hosting a webinar. They just have a problem that they think you can yeah. solve. They could care less that you figured out the technology. They just, they just want their problem solved. So if your offer sucks and your message sucks, your, 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 your webinar is not going to do well, you right. know? And so, so that's the core. And then it's how you present that, you know, around that, particularly the content. Um, I think people wonder, what do I teach? Um, it needs to be strategic, right? Um, there's there's teaching content and there's conversion content. Um, content that is more conversion based um, does a good job of removing objections and creating aha moments for people. Um, so you need to know with your market, like what are some of their objections? What are some of the things hanging them up from doing what you're teaching and as a result of that buying your product? So you should look to kind of Think of your webinar as the bridge, and all these objections are like obstacles on that bridge, and your job is to take those obstacles and move them off the bridge so that people can walk across to see your offer. Right, you know? I love that. Sort of, I remember I learned that from yeah. you. It's you, yeah. the, the phrase was, you teach away objections. Yeah, so, yeah. So um, you, through your education, obviously tell or explain to people why they whatever they believe isn't true and give them the confidence they need to do that. Yeah, and that'll pave the way for your offer, so that helps. Yeah. And then the follow up is big. I mean, I'd say you need to have a deadline for your for your stuff, um, you know, a bonus or some kind of incentive for people uh, to buy now. Right. People right. need to know why do they need to buy. People are terrible at making decisions. Yeah. You know, so they need to be able to have a reason to buy now. Um, I usually have between a, a maybe like the last one I did was a nine email sequence over four days. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so um, and those emails do a lot of storytelling, sharing case studies, FAQ. Um, why this program pays for itself. Um, and then the last day is four emails and it's like, you know, 24 hour, 12 hour, six yeah. hour, two hour, I think is what I did last time. And that really killed it last time. Um, That's why I bought the webinar mastery summit. I was like thinking about it and then I got the like final 24 hour calls. Like, ah, oh, I want it. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, what so, works? So the scarcity the, works. So, it, so some, some, but, but then keep to your scarcity, right? I'm not right. a big fan of the op reopens and, oh, due to demand, we're reopening it. And I know that works and marketers make money doing that because it's two scarcity points instead of one. So I get it. It's just not philosophically what I, I think is right because you knew you were going to do that in the first place, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm big on keeping it. If you're going to shut it down at a certain point, shut it down at that point, um, you know, and then follow up afterwards to find out why people didn't buy and those type of things, you know? Yeah. And I would say to people too, be genuine to yourself and your brand. I felt like for a while I was trying to be like everyone else instead of just attracting people to who I am and getting those clients. And that's fine. You're gonna have a ton of people who want to work with the genuine you, but it's a lot harder. I think when you're trying to force yourself to be like the influencers in your industry or try to pretend to be like them in your content and your pitch and your webinars too. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, I mean, I've taken a lot of courses and read a lot of books. Um, and I think that, um, that's good to do, right? I don't think, I think you need to extract others ideas, but you got, I do it less than I used to. Um, and I, I think it's good, right? I think the more you can be yourself, um, and just because something works doesn't mean you should do it, you know, like for your brand, it's like, just because, you know, some marketer, you know, has some hack or something that works well, um, that makes them money, but kind of is not in, within your philosophy, doesn't mean you should do that, you know? So there's, in marketing is as much a philosophy as a science. Yeah. And, and so I think you need to stay true to what you wanna do, help people, and I think long game, you'll win. Because the hacks and the, and, the, and the algorithms are gonna change, but the, but the people that you bond with over like five years or 10 years will always stay with you. And if you build a tribe of 1,000, 2,000 people who love you no matter what and they'll follow you to whatever new technology comes out you'll be set you know yeah. the rest of your life so. yeah and it's it's funny too i know a lot of us say we want to you know help people and i think a lot of us genuinely do but 
part of it is income based but i think when you get to a certain point when people random people on the internet share their stories about how you've impacted their life then you start to get that feeling too of you know making an impact on people is feels i guess just more motivating to keep pushing you in your business life and your experience. I had some random lady on LinkedIn comment, I've never met her, how much my content's like impacted her life positively. And I was like, that's incredible. Like I yeah. wouldn't maybe say to everyone, that's why I do it, but it really feels like it on those days. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. And so that's one reason to leave behind things like videos and books and stuff. Um, and I still, I made a video probably five years ago on YouTube um, it was in the health space and I just, and it, it's like I think it's the number one video on YouTube for like sacrum pain people that have like tailbone type of pain and I still get comments every week from that video like hey thank you so much you know that really helped I think it gets like 5,000 hits a month or something like wow. that probably That's you know awesome. it's got like it's got like a couple hundred thousand views on it or something like that but it's like and those kind of things yeah I mean it, it's still it's funny because it's old and just sits there but it's it's um it's um, it's those kind of things that are pretty neat, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, so why don't you, if we can wrap this up, tell us uh, what people should avoid if <clears throat> you're getting into webinars for the first time, or even if you've been doing it for a while, if there's like a big thing they should be avoiding or things to look out for. Yeah, avoid. Um, definitely don't avoid practice. <laughs> um, I think especially if you're on the newer end, um, make sure to practice your software, not the day before your webinar, but like, you know, a few times beforehand. I've, I've seen that over and over again. Yeah. People... Um, don't over teach on your webinar. I'm guilty of this. I still struggle with this. I just can't help it. I just like to teach. I'm more of a teacher than a salesman, you know? So, um, but I tend to overwhelm people. I think that many of us do that. And so, um, try to do a little bit less, but better sort of model with your webinar. I think that would help. Um, and don't be afraid. To, don't be afraid to follow up with people and sell your thing. You know, like don't be afraid to sell your thing. I think a lot of people have a lot of issues around sales. Um, you know, don't be afraid. And when you're when you when you have something good to share, share it and sell it. Um, the goal isn't to just build a list; it's to build a, a list of customers, right? right. And, and a people that really care, not just a, a list of freebie seekers or or um, people like that. Um, I think you know it, it's a good mix. I mean, I still appreciate the freebie seekers. You know, I'll give them free emails. I send out emails each week and stuff. And you know, it's like right. okay, you know, that's my gift. That's my tithe, or you know, my my my. Uh, <laughs> You know, my tithe to the world or my, um, you know, some people volunteer in kitchens and things like that. I, I think my some of our best gifts as, as thought leaders or content creators is is our free content. You know, and, I love and, that. And, I haven't heard of that perspective, yeah. but I love that. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're right. It yeah. does make an impact. And to your point, um, not that I'm any webinar expert, but your point about oh, not overwhelming people. Uh, something interesting that I was on a Dave Rosenberg um, webinar, actually, I think he was the JV partner and someone else was doing the webinar, but um, the person doing the webinar did exactly what I did in a webinar, which when I saw them do it, I realized they shouldn't have. And then I like in my head, like, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that myself. But they went like straight from the content, like into the pitch, like instantly. And it was like overwhelming for me. But what I love that Dave did, he like stopped and was like, whoa, whoa, before we do this, let me just take a step back, preface this sets you up and it was really weird it was like that a little reset in my mind like okay now i'm ready to hear your pitch and i thought to myself like in my own webinar i went like straight from content 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 right into the pitch that's super overwhelming people don't even have a moment to catch their breath and they're like did almost i'm getting pitched now all of a sudden so i think that was a at least for me it was nice to mm. just like switch my or at least take a step back and okay now i'm ready to hear what you have to say more you know reset my brain a little bit yeah yeah, I think that's good. The transition from the offer to the pitch, or excuse me, the content to the offer, you know, is sort of a, a good spot, you know, to kind of, you know, take a break, you know, tell them that they, I usually use the two paths approach. They could take one path yeah. or the other, you know, that kind of thing. That's pretty classic, I yeah, think. Yeah, do it, kind do of it yourself with. the hard way or pay me and I'll show you the easy way. Yeah, exactly. So that's pretty much it. But yeah. Cool, cool well, man. John, listen, this advice is incredible for everyone watching uh, this and obviously, of course, the replay. John's website um, has incredible content. Like he said, a lot of really great free stuff. And if that really speaks to you, I want to encourage you to buy his premium stuff. I'm a student. I love it. That's how we're connected. Uh, again, John, thank you so much for being here on Laptop Empires. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you having me. Awesome.